This week, a great canoe restoration project. Hi everybody, we start this week with a little bit of a sad origin story for this canoe project, but I promise it leads to a hopeful and happy ending. We bought this broken shell from a friend at work whose husband had started the cedar canoe build project, but passed away after laying down the initial cedar strips. It sat for 10 years until my son and I heard about it and promised to finish the project. At the end of the restoration video, we wind up revealing it to the family we bought it from. So it'll be a great ending to this story. Stick with us. And so I chose to use epoxy to glue the shell back together, but it's typically thin and runny, unless you thicken it up with some wood fiber, and that actually stays in place pretty well and allows you to tape it back together. So I wound up working about a foot at a time, filling it in with this mixture and taping it back together. Now the original builder had finished it with a stain and some polyurethane to actually protect the cedar and prevent it from aging and weathering, but we needed to sand it all off. And that preps us for the fiberglass. And this is our fourth watercraft build. And we've sort of learned to work from the middle out so that the fabric stretches the right way and doesn't bunch up. Also on the stem and the stern, we overlapped the fabric so that there are two layers just with this first layer of fiberglass, two layers covering the stem and the stern. Thankfully that stuff sanded off pretty quickly. Now we already had two overlapping layers, but I wanted to add one more layer of fiberglass tape to beef up that stem and stern. And it sanded off pretty easily. Didn't take long to make the edges nice and smooth. And actually we didn't have a lot of leftover fiberglass, so worked out well. And of course, what's a project like this without a little fun? We really wanted to do this outside, but because of the cottonwood and the dust, we thought it best to move inside the garage. Inside the canoe, we had to come up with some creative solutions like using this curved card scraper to help us get the gunk out. I also created this custom curved pad for the sander, and you can see that in this particular video that talked about our finishing tips and hacks. I'll post that link in the comments section of the video. I made another batch of that thickened epoxy, this time to the consistency of peanut butter, on the stem and stern by putting a cove and that really builds it up, provides extra strength, but it was definitely hard to sand down. I'm constantly amazed at how you can take a white piece of fabric like this fiberglass six ounce cloth, and once it gets wetted out with epoxy, it's almost completely clear. And you can see every facet of the wood grain. It's just beautiful. And because this is a 36 inch width or beam canoe, it needs extra fiberglass strength in the footwell to support people's weight. And I had fun 
goofing around in between all of our steps on the build. So very often you can't get lumber that's exactly 14 feet long or 16 feet long and you're going to have to scarf a couple of joints. And you can try to cut it with a handsaw, but it's just not going to come out that great. So it helps to build a jig to give you exact cuts for every two pieces that you have to put together. And so this turned out to be a simple jig that glides on the track on my table saw to give me clean, clean cuts. And that is a beautifully clean cut. And when I cut the other piece of lumber like this and I put the two pieces together with epoxy, it's going to be a great joint. You'll never see it. And so I decided to use my drill press and a half inch Forstner bit with two pieces back to back, drilled out in the center on the ends of each scupper. And that winds up giving me a quarter inch half moon shape inside each particular scupper. But I also needed to build this particular jig to help me with the clean out. So gouging out the center between those two half moon pieces created on the drill press gives me a nice quarter inch scupper. Each of these was three inches long with a four inch gap in between each cut. 20 on each side. And now it's time to put these two 10 foot lengths together with some epoxy. And I had pre-marked these so that I knew where the grain should line up. And I had to put a couple of extra tables in the garage just to support the length. I also built, to make it easier for us to put the in whales in place, I put a little triangle out of cherry on the stem and the stern. Now I'll tell you that we wound up breaking one of these 10 foot lengths and I don't have it on camera because there were way too many uh, words uh, consisting of four letters that we didn't want to include in the video. Uh, so I wound up having to remanufacture one of these lengths and we found a way to steam them to make it easier to bend. And as it turns out, it was a, a great solution. I think if we had used a different wood, it might have been more flexible, but the cherry was pretty stiff. I really liked the look of the cherry, but we did have to steam the ends to make these final bends. And now for the yoke, I really tried to do this all on the bandsaw, but it was so long I couldn't make all the turns I needed to make, so I just had to finish it off with a jigsaw. And quite a bit of sanding. I also used a roundover bit to eliminate some of my sanding and provide a smooth grip surface for the yoke. In fact, I used the roundover bit on the seat construction that you'll see in a minute. And of course, the official shop brand. Now for the seats and the yoke, I had thicker material that I ordered from our local lumber yard. And this is going to be one inch by an inch and a half stock for the seats. 
And I glued these together and squared them up. And I don't show it on camera, but I have hardwood dowels that I wound up drilling in to each one of these joints to give it more strength. And then some final cleanup with a round over bit. I also don't show on camera that we wound up adding three coats of the marine varnish to these before we put on the seat webbing. And this is the first time I've ever done this. So tried to find ways to uh, grab it with one hand, give it some tension before I put staples in to lock it down. And I wound up using stainless steel staples for this construction. And to singe the fibers here. And touching it, I don't know what I was thinking. Because it's hot. But I took my time. Everything was measured out so that I knew it would be nice and even between each one of the strips. And I wound up getting really good tension on the seats. Something else we did in the middle of this build is I created my own paddle. And I'll put that video link in the comment section as well. It turns out you can build that paddle in a single day. It was a great project. Now for the decks, this is really the, the big decorative piece on the canoe. And I wound up using some exotic hardwoods here to really make them stand out. And because the stem and the stern were not exactly the same dimensions, the stem on this particular design is narrower than the stern. I had to cut out two templates to make sure that my, my decks would fit exactly. And although I don't show it, of course there was some sanding on the belt sander to get them to fit tightly. And some more peanut butter epoxy to really get them to set in place. Turned out to be pretty easy to sand down. Now we don't show a lot of the sanding, but of course there was plenty of finished sanding before we started to put the pieces together. And I'll talk a little bit more about the extra wood we used uh, to be able to hang the seats coming up. And so I want to give credit here to Bear Mountain Boats and their YouTube site called Canoe Craft for this seat jig idea. This jig actually helped us center the seats and get them placed so that we could fit them properly. And also because we used that dark hardwood called Wenge for the canoe decks, I had some more of that that I thought would look great to use as spacers between the top of the canoe and the seat. So we used the Wenge for these hanger blocks. That little guy? <laughs> Don't worry about that little guy. That little guy. We really had to play with the seats to get them to fit against the hole. But I really think these Wenge blocks look great. Actually, I kind of like the way they look. Now just drilling in the holes for the yoke. And I wound up custom manufacturing these aluminum washers to provide more support on the bottom as we bolted them in place. And this is just rigid aluminum 6061. You can buy in plate form, but you know, then you've got to cut out your own custom made washers. and a little more fun in the shop.
While we don't have any formal sponsors on our little channel, that's fine, but I really did want to give some props to this product from Total Boat. This Gleam Marine Varnish, it's got UV inhibitor built in. It really went on great, and I want to compliment my son Matt on the great job he did in laying down the finish layers. It took quite a long time. Um, a number of the days that we were using to finish the canoe were pretty humid and uncharacteristically we had a lot of <laughs> rainstorms kind of hit us. So it took a while for the layers to dry so that we could do some light sanding with 320 grit paper and get it to the shine and the finish that you're seeing in the video. And here we see that extra three quarter inch layer of cherry we added to provide more support for the seat hangers. Today I was kind of filled with mixed emotions here. I mean, this project really gave us something to look forward to during the COVID lockdown. So it's a little sad that the project is done, but I'm so thrilled actually at the outcome that uh, we're pretty excited. And I always like to show some glamor shots at the end uh, when a project comes out as nicely as this one has. The shine is, is gorgeous after the multiple layers. There's four layers of marine varnish uh, on the inside and I believe five on the outside. The trim came out beautifully. The cherry wood is a great accent to the cedar strips and the dark wood that we used on the decks really accentuate the trim. Well, the original builder of the shell's name was Bart and his dad was the first one to walk up to see the finished canoe. It did get a little emotional at times. Farewell. Do you need Sue back? Or should I dump her in the lake? Dump her in the lake! Dump her in the lake! Sue's late husband really did a great job in building the shell and my family was really proud to be able to restore and finish the project. <laughs>